Hi everyone, this is Paul Lang from Discipline Trading Strategies with a video called Benintoff Month? Question mark. I did a similar video, must be almost a year ago, and I do these when a more difficult time arises in the market. When things are going along in a bullish manner, a lot of people get complacent and everything seems to be just fine. It's these times like this that separate the really properly trained traders, investors from the non. I do this as a service for people. I don't mean this to be braggadocious in any way, but I think it's important for people to understand that you can learn how to do this very accurately. I want to take a look and do this fairly quickly at day trading in this volatility, swing trading in this volatility, and long-term trading in this volatility. Day trading. I want to read this real quick so you understand what day trading means. As a day trader, we are always flexible and biased. It depends on the charts and the setup. Even on very bullish daily charts, prices don't go up every minute of every day. The guide as a day trader is a 60 minute chart. It can be overextended or in a downtrend even when the daily chart is bullish. Shorting is better when all else is equal. When the daily chart pattern is super bullish, be bullish. When it is bearish, be bearish. And when it is sideways, be bearish. By shorting rallies, you will do better. This was the first week of October. This is the results from the DTS trading room if you're not familiar with it I post the results in there and they stay in there for a couple three weeks for the members to see and be able to interact with and copy in case they missed a day or missed part of a day the actual results in the room have more information including entry and exit times as well as the strategy and the strategy of entry I boil it down a little bit to the basics just to fit on the slide this is the first week you can see day by day and this covers the first week of October, where, of course, we began to get very bearish toward the middle of that week. And I wanted to show you that I happen to like the slop, as I like to say, and I like the volatile times and I like the indecisive times because I think it offers the best opportunity. This was that transitional week. I'll show you in a chart in just a minute. You can take a look. I think it's important for people to understand that a goal in trading as a day trader should be to make one risk unit a day. There's a video that describes that more. I'll refer to it at the end of when I'm done talking here. So this was a almost double the goal week with a normal amount of trades. I tend to average four to five a day. I did about five on average during this three week period. The chart right there, October 1st was right there. So we had the first, the second, the third, and then Thursday and Friday were the big decline days. And you can see it really, didn't affect trading at all. It is just analyzing what's going on and playing the appropriate symbols on that particular day. That's why day trading is such fun. Helpful was a market bias. I had a big change in market bias that went out to subscribers of the trading room and to the letters that I write. October 1st, the midterm outlook was max bullish and October 2nd, I flipped it to max bearish. The intraday outlook, of course, changes from day to day. That's not a big deal. The big, big, big picture, the monthly charts, the one that is looking out for the crash of 2008, the crash of 2000 did not change. I have a lot of comments about that. It's in a video I did that you can access as well. I'll refer to it in just a moment. These are the comments. You can read those on your own if you pause the tape. That's what went in the letter on October 2nd, the morning of October 2nd before the market opens, which actually was a day or two earlier before we started the real move down. This was the second week of October, which of course included a big move down, a stall day, an attempted move up. And again, you can see the results is simply aren't affected by the individual bias on any particular day. So these two weeks are happening in a very bullish market, but in a very bearish two week period that seemed to come out of nowhere to a lot of people. You can't call tops and bottoms. You can with great accuracy. It's called making money. You cannot predict, but you can make intelligent, accurate decisions, understanding the language of charts. The last two weeks were very bearish weeks with a perfect bearish bias. Yet, as a day trader, I had 27 longs and 26 shorts, and I prefer to short. Now, I think that was an interesting statistic. One of the points I wanted to bring out when I did this, and I did this in another webinar event, was to show how much the bearish bias helped, and it did. But what's also interesting is unique plays. I ended up having almost equal longs and shorts, and actually the longs made a little bit more money, mostly because of one very impressive day that was all bullish bias. But that's the point. The bearish bias does help a lot to keep you looking and focused on specific type of longs and absent any special plays for the general market to be falling. The average of about five trades per day is right on. Why long? Just unique plays. 
On some bullish days, I have more shorts than longs. The third week of October, we had that one recovery day, and it was a big day. This was an unusual day. It was more than the whole week's goal in one day. And of course, that doesn't happen all that often. But the question is, did you know to be bullish that day and to really be bullish and to push the button? On that particular day, there were four and only four trades. They were all longs, and some of them were held for most of the day. Bottom line, what it's all about is stock selection, preparation, market bias, and a game plan for the day. I'm very big as a day trader in terms of having a plan. We don't sit there all day in the trading room. We hit the opening 90 minutes is always a key time. And then we look for the key times to be trading, whether that's to shut down 1030 or whether that's to come back at lunch. It depends on the day and the pattern that sets up on any particular day. Also extremely important, I mentioned that very bullish day. The day before the bullish day was a do nothing day. I felt that the market was going to be dead sideways, and it was. This is the end of the day. That's the QQQ or what I'm using for the market. And we did two trades that broke even. We're done trading by 10 o'clock and shut down shop. There's no need to be there when there aren't opportunities. Swing trading. Generally, I don't like this time frame. Day trading and long-term trading are where I am. Swing trading is generally using daily charts to hold for a few days. While I have seen swing trading touted as the safe place to be when you start, I couldn't disagree more. To me, it's too hard of a time frame to trade. So if it's too hard for me, it goes in the category of there are a lot of things you hear when you're new that are wrong. If you are testing the water swing trading, I will bet you're not doing well. I will be doing a video that will be in the free stuff very soon that explains why. Next, long-term trading. Long-term means usually weekly and monthly charts for positions you hold for weeks to months. The DTS Long-Term Trader is a subscription letter that goes out as needed. The Long-Term Trader on October 2nd had a short play, which was the first play this year that was a short. It was a short on ATI. As of the time I'm actually recording this, it is Tuesday, and ATI actually hit both of its targets already. Along with that, of course, were the market comments also in the DTS Long-Term Trader on October 2nd, changing the outlook in the midterm to bearish. And also in here and in another video, I stated the fact that for the first time since 2016, I will not be interested in buying the support area on the weekly chart. Rather, I will be looking to short the next rally on the weekly chart because the midterm bias I feel is gonna be sideways to bearish. And also there's a little footnote while that big, big, big picture bias is still green, there are three ways you can make a top, and we are not making a top in two of those three ways, but the third one is more difficult to ascertain, and it's possible at some point in the future I could look back and say, you know what, maybe that is the top for a while, but I'm not saying that right now. For additional information, you can watch a video called a Bookmark on the Market 3 that discusses the call on October 2nd to go to a bearish bias and the reasons why. I also suggest you watch from chart reader to investor that is also on the free stuff page. I'll show you where in just a second and discusses how as a day trader, your goal needs to be one risk unit and you adjust your risk accordingly, but it's a very specific process that has to happen. I also suggest that you explore all the great information in the free stuff area. And then when you are ready, get involved, make some extra money. If you go to the website at DTS, which is disciplinetradingstrategies.com, on the left side, you can click on free stuff. And this is what will come up. You'll have a bunch of videos that are going to be categorized. They're play of the week videos. And then in the prior events, you will find the from chart reader to trader investor. And then down in miscellaneous videos, you will find a bookmark on the market part three. Hope you enjoyed this. This is Paul Lang from Discipline Trading Strategies. And until next time, good trading, everybody.